You probably know about Sota Zachary Okada, the best player in Japan. He's the player who could strike fear into a player while just standing still. He's the 18 year old, what? He's 18? That could play with patience of a veteran. And he's a small kid that could take his stock off you off of one punish. But before Zachary was any of that, he was a little 14 year old kid that had a 3DS. Zachary's beginnings are hard to pin down because of Japan's language barrier and due to the fact that they had a mix of how they did tournaments and all that such. The earliest VOD we could find of him was from Tamisuma55, which was a Smash Bros 3DS tournament. This was well after the 3DS's time in the sun in 2014, but the 3DS still had online tournaments like Tamisuma. Tamisuma regularly got about 100 entrants and even attracted some of Japan's strongest players. By 2017, Zachary was one of those strong players. He won Tamisuma 55 of Korin, his future Smash 4 main. While the 3DS wasn't the biggest or brightest or most competitive stage, it made sense for Zachary since he was still studying in high school. He earned solid wins on notable players during those 3DS days as well. He beat Aigoski, a notable Alomar main, Tatsuyo, a notable Mario, Rizayasu, 23rd in Japan's Smash 4 power rankings, U3, 22nd on Japan's power rankings, and Rikuya, who isn't a top player, but they did do this at EVO Japan. Along the way, he'd show beginnings of skill that would make him the player he is today. He'd show speed and sharp movement, these deep fundamentals that make it easy for him to master many characters, that suffocating pressure and boldness and advantage, and some godlike DI. But he wouldn't show that patient and still style just yet. That would only come from a much bigger stage, Smash 4 on the Wii U. But before we jump right into it, we're going to talk to you about going to ProGuides.com, where you can check out Instapro, where you can get help on being the best you can be in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Our new Pro Pass grants you access into Instapro, along with exclusive content immediately. We even have exclusive courses taught by some of your favorite players, including MKLeo, Esam, and Zero. Check the link in the description to learn about Pro Guides. Right out the gate, Zachary picked the biggest stage in Japan, Umabora. Umabora is Japan's premier tournament series and it's stacked with talent. Despite that, Zachary made Umabora 26 his debut. And like most players going to the first big tournament, he went 0-2. Zachary was undoubtedly a prodigy. He was already beating ranked players as a high schooler with the 3DS, but the big stage demanded that he reach new heights. At the Umabora Japan Major in May 2017, Zachary would begin his ascent. He'd land 65th out of 478 entrants after going 4-2. In the process, he'd take Lee and Earth to game threes. It was a huge improvement for an 0-2 player and proof of Zachary's budding talent. By the end of 2017, he would finally get his breakout run at Umabora TAT. After beating Kirihara, the 28th ranked player on Smash 4's PGR 100, he'd go on to face Hikaru, one of the best DK players in the world. Hikaru would be the perfect opponent to test Zachary's medal. Not only was Hikaru consistently ranked in Japan and internationally, his DK was built to punish any misplaced aggression, and Zachary was a young, aggressive Wi-Fi warrior. In Game 1, Hikaru would get an early lead by punishing Zachary's aggressive landing. Zachary didn't give up and used Korin's huge hitboxes and great speed to control neutral and return the game to even. In the final stock, patient Zachary is born. Zachary adopts stillness, not moving forward into DK's grab range. He waits until he can swipe back stage control. Then when he needs it the most, he channels the aggression. In game two, Hikaru read and dismantled Zachary. He'd use a clever B-reverse giant punch to hard read Zachary's approach and get the zero to death. He'd also punish almost every aggressive option that Zachary made and won convincingly. But Zachary wasn't rattled. He laughed the two stock off and headed into game three. Zachary opened up too aggressively and got punished for overextending, but he quickly adapted, returning to patience and stillness. He waited for his turn, then used Korin's disjoints and range to control the match. He waits and responds. And slowly but surely, he earns an artful win. This would only be the state of Zachary's rise. He'd get ninth at Umabora TAT, but he was gunning for first. He'd start by picking up even bigger wins on even bigger names like Umeki, Raito, Takeda, and Su. By the end of the Smash 4 era, Zachary established himself as Japan's newest and scariest threat. He had one of the strongest finishes in all of Smash 4, getting third at Umabora 34 with the big win over Leia and an even bigger comeback win over Japan's fifth ranked player, Mietsuno. To cap it all off, he got the gold at Sumebato 27 and Sumebato 4U final. The Zachary style we come to know and love now took full form. 
In the final days of Smash 4, Sakurai didn't just refine his style, he also mastered Bayonetta to have a complete command of the meta. He used Bayonetta's endless combo tools to feed his high pressure style, and he put a stranglehold on Japan's top ranked competitors, like Shaky. With the meta on his side, and his style refined, Sakurai looked nearly invincible. He beat Japanese legends like Ken and won tournaments almost without dropping a set. In a year and a half, he'd gone all the way from 3DS Wi-Fi Warrior to 8th best on Japan's power rankings in Smash 4. Smash 4 was leaving the building, but Zachary had only just arrived. Those final days of Smash 4 were warnings of what was to come. When Ultimate arrived, Zachary would climb even higher. By the end of Smash 4, the Japanese scene had honed Zachary into an incredibly balanced player. Known for being more neutral heavy, defensive, and flowchart based, the Japanese scene refined Zachary's explosive bursts of aggression. Not to mention, Ultimate's engine fit Zachary's playstyle perfectly. The game valued spacing, patience, and careful approaches, but at the same time, it had more explosive combos, kill confirms, and edge guards. Zachary got to work early with Ultimate, cleaning up his local, the weekly Smash Party. He gravitated towards Wolf quickly, but he had extra characters in his arsenal since day one. He had a Meta Knight with enough combo and edge guard pressure to look like a mini Smash 4 Bale, and a Marth that looks almost like a Smash 4 Corrin. As the scene grew, Zachary naturally picked up bigger wins at bigger tournaments. He took first place at Sumo Battle SP1 with a huge loser's run and a first place at Umabor SP2 without dropping a set. With each and every set, he was dynamic and exciting in advantage and disadvantage, pushing every opening to the fullest, somehow dodging every hitbox on screen, and taking the advantage, all while taking stocks in explosive ways. Zachary's big results and even bigger plays gave him a reputation. He's a Japanese MK rail. Zachary had just about established himself as Japan's best player and earned himself a sponsor along the way. All that was left was to prove himself on the international stage. Genesis 6 would be his first chance to do it. Coming into the tournament, Zachary was still lurking under the radar. Some players and commentators knew about how good he was, but the language and internet barrier meant many international viewers and fans didn't know what Japan's new prodigy could do, but they were about to find out. At Genesis 6, Zachary put every talent on display. The insane microspacing. Oh, yeah, right. you know, the hard whiff punishes. So wow. The deceptive aerial drift. Right into the, face. the endless patience in each string. The hard callouts. The huge punishes. The relentless but calm approach. The controlled aggression. Zachary got fifth at Genesis 6, falling to Void and the Buzz in two Game 5 sets. But over the course of that run, he'd made a name for himself in the international scene, and he became a crowd favorite, getting howls from the audience. It was no wonder why Zachary became popular. He wasn't just good, he was uniquely good. He naturally focused on pursuing each punish to the limit, but his region's reserve style turned his neutral game into something precise and patient. He could be still neutral, then explode into advantage. After Genesis 6, Zachary would attend Summit and travel more often. He'd also become known for his humility and positivity. <laughs> and for the fun ways he got around the language barrier. <laughs> However, after Genesis 6, he'd fall into a small slump. He'd still make top eights, but he had trouble winning tournaments. At Frostbite 2019, he'd get his worst results since June 2018, 33rd. He took two disappointing losses from Mudace and ZD. Zachary's valleys are better than most competitors' peaks, so he still made 12 on PGRU's first season, but that meant that he wasn't the best in Japan anymore. Chuton ranked 5th. The lack of success would eventually push Zachary into becoming one of Ultimate's most versatile players. The Japanese prodigy started to use new characters in key situations. He broke out Lucina to get revenge on Void. Pichu just couldn't handle Lucina's pressure offstage and an advantage. He used Wario to stomp out Light's aggression. Fox couldn't handle Wario's insane air-to-air -air pressure. However, the biggest change to Zachary's roster would come at Super Smash Con 2019. Down 2-1 up against loser's bracket Leo, Zachary went Rob. 
It wasn't the first time he'd used a robot, but it was the first time he did it with so much on the line. It only took a minute to see why Zachary made the choice. That's Wario too. Yeah, you're very right. I mean, Zachary in general, we also know he has a Pokemon trainer. He had so okay. much. Oh, the crowd is going wild for this. Zachary not even taking percent anymore. Leo, what is he going to be able to do to try to close this out? Well, nothing, nothing at all, because Zachary takes it. Zachary took game four of a commanding two stock lead, but Leo's a different kind of opponent. In a last hit situation, game five, Zachary lost. Into the up smash. With the emotional loss here. Even though it was a devastating loss, it gave Zachary his new main, Rob. Rob fits Zachary's style super well because the robot has the insane creative punishes Zachary loves, and insane aerial mobility for edge guarding and landing, and great tools for patiently controlling neutral. In the coming tournaments, Zachary turned towards Joker, Rob, and Game Watch. The kid had such incredible raw fundamentals and Smash IQ that he can unlock the full potential of almost any character. After Super Smash Con, Zachary came back to Japan stronger than ever. He won EGS Cup 2 using only Joker to defeat Atsuji, one of Japan's best Lucinas. At Sumibato SP8, he used Rob to beat Komei, one of Japan's best Shulks. And at Sumibato 9, he brought out his classic wolf to defeat Shutan, the Olimar main. All that was left was to win on the biggest stage possible, the International S tier. In October 2019, Zachary would return to the US for Big House 9. Not only was it an international S tier, it was a qualifier for the Smash Ultimate Summit 2. The level of competition was insanely high, but Zachary was more ready than he'd ever had been. He'd make quick work of any competitor who wasn't top 10 level. He'd sweep Cosmos 3-0 and then use Game & Watch to annihilate Arfang. From then on, Zachary would need every character in his arsenal to win. He needed Joker and Wolf to beat Nairo. They needed Rob to beat Tweak. All of that work just to set up for a high stakes rematch against Meister. Meister 3 0'd Zachary in winners, and now the two would face off for third place in a spot at Smash Ultimate Summit 2. Zachary pulled out yet another character, going Sonic in order to counter Game Watch. But Zachary didn't have the mastery needed to beat Meister. Down 2 0, he'd switch back to Joker, and he'd use his knowledge of Game Watch and his perfectly timed punishes to reverse 3 0 and 3 stock one of the best players in the world. Only the buzz was left, and Zachary had great experience for the buzz. Between Shutan and Kitty Hata, Zachary knew how to beat Rosalina and Olimar. With momentum at his back and his two mains in hand, Zachary beat the buzz 6 1. He won his first international tournament and poured out his emotions on stage. After being so close so often, he finally got his big international win. Right now, Zach Ray is ranked 7th on the PGRU. He's back to being ranked number 1 in Japan as well. He's undoubtedly one of the best players to ever play, and he's done it at the age of 18. He's 18? With only 3 years of competitive experience. He's been called the Japanese MK Leo, and with good reason. He's very much his own competitor. No other competitor has a unique mix of precision, patience, and pure punish game. No other competitor can exert as much pressure by just standing still. Don't forget to subscribe to Pro Guides and click the bell so you never miss out on the next upload.